Hi everyone, in today's video, we are going to see how to use a vector database with Spring AI. In this example, we are going to be using Milvus Vector DB. Analyzing or searching inside unstructured documents is difficult. To solve this problem, we convert the unstructured data into numerical vectors and store them into vector db and these vectors can be searched back to provide similar results vector db's help in similarity searches and there are examples all around us for example e-commerce recommendations when we buy something we see a list of recommendations related to the item that we are buying video search feed recommendations all of these examples are of vector search. Let me give you a more relatable example for this. Let's take an example of color wheel. We know similar colors are always together. Imagine that a dog is represented by these numbers in RGB and cat by these. Let's say we have to represent laptop, which is very different than the other two. So it will obviously end up somewhere very far over here. Okay, now let's try to check the representation of puppy. We know that this by intuition that puppy will be closer to dog. Hence its vector representation will be very similar to that of dog but how do we tell this to vector db that puppy needs to be stored in the vicinity of dog and that's where ai comes in these vector representations will be generated by an ai model that ai model is trained and will be able to figure out that the puppy is close to dog than a cat. We are going to use Milvus, which is an open source vector DB and provides high performance and high scalability. We will be integrating this with Spring AI. Milvus can be set up on local with the help of Docker, or you can use Zilli's cloud also. Create an instance of Milvus on cloud for free. We are going to create an e-commerce search functionality and this is how our data is going to look like. We have to store product ID, description vector. This description vector field will be storing the vector representation of the description text. We have category, brand and price. Now let's go to Zilli's cloud and create this. First, you need to create an account on this website cloud.zillies.com. I had already created my account and it will create a cluster for me, which is completely free. After that, I have to go and create a collection. Collection is nothing but like a table. So I'll go here, I'll click on the cluster and I will add a collection. I will call my collection as product embeddings and I have to add fields. So similar to what I had shown in the previous slide, we will be creating the fields of our table. This is going to be product ID and this is primary key which is already set up. Then we will call this as description vector. Let's call this description, another field category, another field brand and then price. Let's check the data types once again. This has to be float vector and what will be put in the dimension. Now this is something which depends on the model that you are going to use. 
For this example, I will be using all mini large model. And for that, the number of dimensions that it creates is 384. You can check what is the dimension of your model from its documentation. There is one more way to check that that I will show you when we will move to coding part. This should be varchar. Let's keep it as 500. Category also should be varchar. Let's keep it 100. Brand also varchar. 100. Price. Let's keep this price as double. Okay. And that's about it. You can just click on create collection now. One more thing to note here is when you will do the sign up and when you will create the cluster here, you will be given a user and a password that you will have to remember and note it down somewhere because we will be using it to make the connection from our Spring AI. So I had noted down what is my user ID and password. Also keep a note of the public endpoint. You can copy this and store it for later reference. Now my collection is created. I can go and check this out. This is the latest collection which I made product embeddings. When I click on the collection, I can see what is the schema of my collection. Product ID is the primary key, description vector as type float vector. Over here I will be storing the vectors which I will be creating. And these fields are normal description category, brand and price. That's it. Let's go to Spring and configure our REST application to make a connection to this Zilli's cloud. Let's create a project. But before that, I wanted to show what all vector DBs does Spring AI support. So in Spring AI, we have support for a lot of vector DBs, Azure AI, Elasticsearch. Milvus is something that we are, we are using in this example. We have support for Neo4j, PG vector, Quadrant, Pinecone, BV8, these are very popular vector DBs. Let's create a new project now. We'll use Maven and I'm going to be using Java 17. You can go ahead and use Java 21 also if you want. Let's change this to com.springi vector DB. Okay. We will add support for Spring REST, which is there in Spring Web. And if you want, you can add vector DB from here itself. Milbus vector database, but we will be using manual configuration for Milbus rather than auto configuration. So we are not using this. For this example, I will be using locally running large language model from Olama. So I'll have to add dependency of that. So I have added Spring Web and Olama. As I told, we will be adding the dependency our, by our own. So we have added the Milvus dependency and let's reload Maven. Now let's go and update the application properties. I will set up the Olama base URL where it is running in my local and which model that I am going to use for embedding. I am using all mini LM L6 V2. You can use any embedding model that you want. Spring AI has support for a lot of embedding models. Let me show you. So if we go to the Spring IO website and if we search for embedding models under AI models. So for embedding models, we have support for Amazon Bedrock, Azure, 
Mistral, Minimax, Olama. This is something that we are using to locally run our large language models. But you can use any one of them. So this is our setting and we need to set our Zilli's username, password and endpoint also which I had shown you. So this is where I will be setting my username, password and endpoint. These informations I will get from cluster details. This is my endpoint and username and password I will get from here. We have configured our application properties. Now we have to provide manual configuration for Milvus DB. Let's create a vector config. And we need to read username, password and endpoint from the application properties key value pairs. So let's declare the at the rate value for the same. This is username and similarly for password. And now for endpoint. Let me try to get these values from application properties. Password is also done and now for endpoint. Now I need to create Melvus service client. For that I will need to provide authorization. So let me create a bean for Melvus service client. Now I will have to create a, a builder for it and provide username, password and endpoint for the same. Now after providing authorization and with URI, this piece of code is complete. Okay, now let's go ahead and create a controller. Inside the controller package, we will create a product controller. In this class, we are going to auto wire embedding model and Milvus service client. Embedding model will be auto configured for us from the application properties. Milver service client we just created and in the constructor I'll just have to auto wire both of them. Both of these properties are now set. This is just some boilerplate code to set both of these properties. And now remember I told you how to figure out the length of the vectors, how we, how we were able to get to that number 384. So let's see that we will create a dummy get mapping endpoint and we will pass a dummy string value. And with that we will be able to figure out what is the length of our embedding vector. So I'll create a dummy endpoint. Let's call this uh, slash hello. Now let me invoke embedding model dot embed. Here I'm just passing any given string and this embed method is going to give me float array. So whatever is the length of this float array will be the length of my dimensions that I'm going to be storing into my vector db. So let me just print the length of embeddings and also return the same. The same length we have to use when we are configuring the schema for our vector db. 
Now let me quickly run this application and let me print this out. Now I am going to hit this and see with this endpoint I am getting 384 and in the console also it should get printed 384 and this is the length of my embedding vectors field. Now in the next part we are going to see how to insert records into our collection and how to perform similarity searches. Stay tuned for the next video.